um, like after I went home, I actually got uh, made redundant from a corporate job Crazy. within a week after getting you home. So I've lost all this money. I get back to the office. <laughs> lost your life. Sorry, you? Greg, you haven't got a job anymore. And it's like, oh, and uh, oh, but I got a nice payout. Got a golden handshake. Golden handshake. I've been <laughs> in the job for 20 years, senior position. So I got a, got a decent quid. Um, and Tell me uh, what you did with that. Well, yeah, I, I went out and hired Jimmy Barnes. <laughs> <laughs> we've got to we got to get this thing revved up and, and yeah. put that money in and you know and and see where see where it takes Hello us. And welcome to the Off Grid Down Under podcast and video series. Melissa here again from Off Grid Down Under and I'm super excited because I have a really special guest, somebody who I met many years ago actually when I went out to the Big Red Bash. I think my first one was 2015 but we'll talk more about that in a minute. We've got Greg Donovan here from the Big Red Bash and I'm just so um, delighted that you agreed to be on the podcast and really want to get to know a lot more about you in the coming little time that we have together. That's great, yeah, looking forward to having a chat. <laughs> I know, I know and you are a chatter which is really great and I'm a chatter so we're in big trouble. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, just, I'm not going to do the intro. I think you've probably got the intro down pat on what you do. Most of our listeners will be really familiar with the Big Red Bash because in the MDC Owners Group, we have our paddock out there where a lot of our members come out each year out to Birdsville. And now Monday, Monday, we go out to as well. Mm. But so you guys might be familiar with it. So you get to meet the man himself and hear from him what it's all about. So yeah, do you want to give us a little intro, a little bit of a thing about what the Big Red Bash is in case somebody's listening who doesn't actually know what it is? Well, I guess the Big Red Bash uh, nowadays is is a rather large sized music festival, and it's it's actually the most remote music festival on the planet. So, uh, out of Birdsville, uh, which is a long way from anywhere, pretty much right on the uh, eastern edge of the Simpson Desert, and uh, you know we get uh, people from uh, from all walks of life coming from every corner of Australia, and some even nowadays from overseas, which is fantastic. It's um, you know most people or, or a large proportion of people bring caravans or camper trucks. It's it's you know you got to bring your own accommodation and it's a big camp out thing so it's a it's like the biggest uh, caravan and camping show uh, in Australia really once everybody's all settled down we've got thousands of campsites and some amazing uh, music from f- fantastic artists. I know and I was going to say that so we can touch on that straight away is that it is really a big celebration of Australian music which is um, incredible. Have you ever had an international act ever or is it all just truly Australian? Well, um, <coughs> this this year we've got uh, Tim Finn, so he's probably a Kiwi. <laughs> we, we want to call him an We English, claim him, don't we? Sort of claim him, but yeah. No, look, it is a celebration of Australian music. I mean, it's in an iconic Australian setting in the outback, you know, mm. at the Big Red Dune, and you know, it's a true Australian uh, sort of setting. And uh, we just think Australia's got so many great artists that mm. you know that we want to keep this as, as a true Australian um, uh, celebration of uh, you know of music and culture. And camping so yeah i love it so i know a little bit about a little bit about your background but i don't think you don't talk a lot about how it all originated where it all started i actually discovered you guys weirdly enough i'm a bit of a a, a sort of a weird person love challenges Mm. and i was googling ultra marathons once Mm. and actually stumbled across what's it called the big red run big red run that's correct yeah Yeah. Yeah. and had this dopey idea that i was i think it was like 250 (laughs) kilometers through the simpson desert yeah yeah so tell us really go right back to the beginning of because i know your background you're an insurance guy Mm. how does an insurance guy (laughs) yeah it was you don't look like one now how does an insurance guy become a promoter of mm. music in Australia and mm. like I guess just tell your story from the beginning 
Yeah, well, I guess from the very beginning, I was I worked in the insurance industry and banking for many, many years, uh, probably um, you know, thirty five years in those industries. And so you're seen, a suit and tie guy. Suit and tie guy, senior yeah. sort of position, you know, uni degree, master's degrees, all this sort of stuff, and uh, working in the uh, big corporate world, um, you know, and uh, and probably uh, around two thousand and eight, two thousand and nine, uh, my young son Steve. Um, got type 1 diabetes and I was going through some tough times myself with work and other things going on and you know all of that sort of stuff really got on top of me and um, you know I'm, I'm working in the corporate world there's a lot of pressure um, you know so that led to some you know some sort of I guess you know mental health challenges for me mm. um, that, that I needed to deal with and um, uh, so so I guess from there <clears throat> um, you know that that went on for a couple of years and it was, you know, it was a really low point in my life. Mm. Uh, but, you know, it's, uh, you know, you, can't, you had to work through those things and recover from that. And as part of doing that, I wanted to do something uh, meaningful, I guess, to, to really to focus on helping other people <coughs> and particularly my son Steve with type 1 diabetes. So. Just explain even, because we hear that word, but what is mm. type 1 diabetes? That's pretty serious. Yeah, That's type 1 diabetes one. Is, is an incurable um, disease. It's yeah. uh, basically an auto immune disease and it's yeah. when the um and he was young wasn't he when he got he was young he was uh he was still 14 nearly 15 years yeah. old so it typically happens in in um younger people they call it juvenile diabetes yep. a lot because yep. it happens when you're young yeah um <clears throat> so it's basically where the body's immune system uh attacks and kills the cells in your pancreas that make insulin mm. and insulin is what you know manages your uh, blood sugar levels yeah. basically so without yeah. that insulin in your system your blood sugars uh, your body cannot uh, manage blood sugars and your blood blood sugars can go way high um, mm -hmm. and be really high and that affects uh, you know your health in a lot of ways yeah damages, so what can you just pass organs. out or does it, does it damage your eyesight like, yeah it damages it, your eyesight your circulation yeah. gives you heart kidney disease all sorts of organ disease if you don't manage your blood sugar levels yeah and <clears throat> it's not only managing the high levels it's managing the low the levels mm. they can plummet down you can have a hypo and pass out and mm. you know people people die from that sort of thing so it's a serious disease and it's not mm. not something i said it's it's a lifelong disease it's not something that can be cured mm. uh, it just has to be managed and you manage that by you know taking insulin yeah uh, managing your blood sugar levels understanding what your blood sugar levels are doing and mm. giving yourself insulin to bring them down and making sure if they go down mm. too low you've got to have you know sugar and bring them back up and it's it's a really daily management things yeah it's, yeah you can't have a holiday or a break from type 1 diabetes you can't just say oh, i'm just going to forget i've got type 1 diabetes for a week you, yeah it's, it's, like, it's, a lifelong. Leave, it's a lifelong thing you've just got to manage it and so, you've still got to manage it so what inspired you then so you're dealing with that the news of your son other stuff you've got going on at work mm. you've taken some time out to process your mental health and work on that i know running was a big thing for you yeah, that's right. I was I've been a runner for a long time. I sort of took up running in my late um, 20s to yeah. keep fit. I used to race motorbikes and that sort of stuff. So I sort of took up running as a way to get my aerobic fitness up and keep fit. And I just got into running from there and was doing marathons and yeah. all sorts of stuff. And, you know, even in my work, I went to New York, run a marathon over there and, and um we raised a lot of money for, um, you know, the 9-11 disaster, the company I work for, lost a oh. lot of people, 180 people. Oh, staff. I didn't know that. Yeah, okay. in 9-11. And uh, so yeah. we were raising money for the education of their children, people yeah. were lost and to help all of that. So I sort of saw that, you know, you could use running and challenges to, to raise money and to do something like that. So, you know, I thought, well, let's have a look at some really major challenges. Yeah. Uh, and uh, running challenges and see see if I can participate in those and use those to raise awareness and funds for, for type 1 diabetes. And ultimately Amazing. That's, that's what I decided to do. In, and what did that look like? Uh, well, it looked a bit crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so in 2011, I came up with a plan um, to run a series called the Four Desert Series, which yeah. involves running 250 kilometres uh, 
uh, across uh, various uh, a desert, and they did four deserts across the world. They did one in uh, Chile, the Atacama Desert, and one in China, the Gobi Desert, um, the Sahara Desert, and uh, also Antarctica. Which so you're going from the Sahara, which I can mm. imagine, what were the temperatures there oh, when 45. you were running? Forty-five. <laughs> it was crazy. Probably yeah. at night time. Yeah. 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 And then you're in the Antarctica. What yeah, were the temperatures that, there? Oh, it was minus ten. You know. Wow. Uh, we were there in the, the summertime. So. so you did those four deserts yeah. in one year. Yeah, raising year, funds, raising, raising funds, money. yeah, raise, raise a, a really good amount of money for type 1 diabetes and awareness. Yeah. And uh, so from there, I wanted to uh, see how these desert runs really were quite inspiring events and yeah. engaging people and bringing yeah. people from around the world to run across these deserts. So just yeah. sort of, well, we really need. So a seed was sown. Yeah, I really need to, you know, do something like this in Australia, start something like this up. So we had nothing, no. We had so nothing. We had none, no, no runs of that style in Australia. Really? Okay. So, yeah, we decided to start up a run and uh, <clears throat> that became the Big Red Run and the idea was to keep this fundraising going for type 1 diabetes. Yeah. And where, so and where did you look at? What were some of the sites? You looked at oh, the I sort of run. really looked just at birds. Just we were knew. looking at, you know, we wanted a desert that was well known. So the Simpson Desert was, yeah, you know, an iconically well known desert yeah. in Australia, and yeah. we needed somewhere where there was a sort of a bit of civilization near the desert. If you could call Birdsville civilization, yeah, Birdsville civilization. <laughs> How many people there. live in Birdsville? Oh, about a hundred people live yeah. in Birdsville. Yeah, I love it. I mean, it's got the famous pub, it's yeah, got the, the famous pub, races, yeah, and the bakery, and oh, the bakery is super yeah, famous. Yeah, yeah, camel but, pies. I but, know, and yeah, a beautiful yeah. cricket oval. That's right. That's yeah. about it. Yeah. yeah, so we decided to base this running event in Birdsville, yeah. and we had the starting line actually right outside the Birdsville pub. Did you? And the finishing line at, outside the Birdsville pub. Oh. So basically, you left from the pub, you run out into the desert. Uh, the first day was a forty-two kilometre run from Birdsville across the dunes, yeah, out to Big Red where we camped there, and then we ran various parts of the desert from there over the over the next six days. So wow. And then the last day was just a small run from, from about ten kilometres on the outskirts. To Birdsville, back to Birdsville. Was that about at the hotel? Two hundred and fifty k's. Two hundred and fifty kilometres altogether. So yeah, we, we started that up, and we attracted you know runners from uh, around Australia, even some international runners came out and. That's amazing. What time? Um, what and, year was that? Uh, that was uh, twenty thirteen. Was the first run amazing? And so we we did that and. Uh, uh, we we, we uh, the big red run went for a period of six years through to 2019. We mm. don't do it anymore, uh, but we during that period we raised you know about one point over 1.1 million dollars for juvenile diabetes. That's incredible. And what I want to say too, from my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, you self funded this like this you put your own money into this to make it happen. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you might have had sponsors or something, but you definitely put a large chunk of your own money into that. Yeah, look, you. it was something that, um, you know, I, I invested in heavily, the, the mm. money that I had. Um, mm. Yeah, I sort of backed... And you had a family and a wife. And a family and a wife yeah. and a job, a corporate job. Yeah, you were still you know, doing the insurance gig. Insurance and all that. So, you know, it was, there was a lot going on and it was a, you know, yeah. it was just, you just had to keep putting on the money because these things don't run Who's themselves. Gonna, no one's going to back it. No one's going to back it. And, yeah. You know, we have very little sponsorship. Um, yeah, fascinating. But, you know, it, it, uh, it's just something that, that, that I had, you know, felt, you know, that I wanted to do. Do you think you had a calling? Do you feel, do you? I'm a bit woo-woo. Do you think you had some kind of like actual calling that you did, like a obsession almost that you had to do this? Do you think it was that deep or no? You just you just yeah. That kind look, of guy? I think it was a bit of a, an obsession. You know, I really yeah. wanted to do something to make a difference. I wanted to do something different. I wanted yeah. something I could really focus on. Something that was a challenge. Something that was not mm. easy. Put your mind to and try and, and achieve something and and, and and give back and give back. Yeah. And, and you know that's that was the whole purpose of the thing. And I could see along term you know a longer term picture in, in it as well but um, mm. and that sort of sowed the seeds to um, to uh, for the big red bash and there was I no know. intention of like we didn't never yeah. went out to birds with any intention of having a music festival yeah. or doing anything <laughs> remotely like the big yeah. red bash like you would have to have rocks in your head to go out and plan to do something like that. Think yeah, it's, all, it's such think a leap. Something, something like that might work. It's so just, how did it evolve? What happened? Well, it's just really part of the run. Yeah. Part of the first year of the run, 2013, we had um, mm. John Williamson come out yeah. as part of celebrating us starting up this run. Such an icon. How did you yeah. get him? Well, we had contacts who yeah, knew John cool. Williamson and we got in touch and said, look, we'd, you know, we'd love you to come out and play on the Big Red June. <laughs> he had just brought out an album at 
that stage called, That's convenient. called the Big Red. No, um, the, no. Yeah, it did. And it, it's meant to be. Called the Big Red, which was not just about the Big Red journey, it was about the middle of Australia and travelling mm. out back. So we That's thought, so symbolic. Mm, absolutely. And, yeah, uh, wow. Yeah, he, he agreed to come out um, and play in the Big Red June. And uh, it was really something just for our runners and our volunteers. Part of the Big Red Run, it was going to be yeah. a little part of that. But, uh, you know, the Bush Telegraph gets out, people will go, oh, we hear John Williams is coming to play <laughs> the Big Red June. Can we come and watch? You know, it's something to be pretty special. So. And we actually perched up on top of Big Red. Yeah, perched wow. right on top of Big Red and uh, the little amphitheatre up on top of Big Red for people who've been perfect, there. Actually. Those, perfect setting for it. And um, yeah, so we got we got him up there, and you know, people just kept contacting us saying, "Can we come?" And I thought, "Well, yeah, maybe." What, what, well, let's, you know, let's offer some tickets. Let's we'll put some tickets for sale. And, yeah, because um, it's more fundraising, isn't it? More fundraising, mm. more funds, you know, and also covering some of the costs of putting it all on. And, yeah, uh, yeah. So, so we sold a few tickets, you know. I can't remember how many. It would have been maybe a couple of hundred tickets. So Pretty good well, it's for, the yeah, for the great unknown. For the great unknown. And, <laughs> um, yeah, so th and, th and that, that was it. That was sort of as far as we got. And uh, afterwards, there was just so many people going, well, isn't it fantastic to have this sort of live music, Australian music out mm. in this desert environment? and it was so unique and different. Yeah, and, truly. Um, yeah, then, then uh, that was sort of, that's when the little light bulb went on and thought, well, maybe we can do a little bit more music. It seemed to be quite popular. Yeah, so what happened? more popular than running 250 kilometres yeah. through the desert. <laughs> well, it's funny because <laughs> I never did do the Big Red Run, but I certainly came out to the Big Red Bash. That's it. So See, that just yeah, it proves the in, point. Yeah, exactly. And if you're all about the fundraising at that point in time, it's like, well, you know, that's what you're there to do is raise funds. So that's how right. are we going to get more people, more money? Yeah, yeah. How funny. So what, the second year, how did that go running that, like that transitioning into kind yeah, of like well, a run and music? 2014, that was the second year. We had put the big red run on again. That that event grew actually. We got more runners. Like I think we started with about 45 runners in yeah. 2020. 12 and I think we're up to about 80 or 90 runners in yeah. uh, the work gets out 80 or 90 runners in the next year and and then we decided to separate the music bit uh, to have it after the big red run so right John Williams we had during the big red run actually on the first day of the big red run oh really yeah. Got it all wrong. so it was, <laughs> yeah. you know, it was really mad because we're trying to manage this run and we're trying to manage it Everyone's trying to think about sleeping. Yeah, yeah, so it was really, yeah. So Funny. we thought, oh, we'll, we'll do the Big Red Run and then afterwards we'll put on a little two-day festival. Yeah. And, uh, and then we start, you know, so we've got a whole bunch of artists over two yeah. days. We've got John Williamson back and then we've got Casey Chambers. and Really? That early? James Rain and Daryl Braithwaite. That and, early? You know, well, yeah, all these people. That's incredible. And, and it was really very basic. We said the stage we set up was really small and everything was really... <laughs> Just really basic. It was um, so good, though. Uh, yeah, and then but that was 2014, and yeah. we didn't really get a huge crowd. We got about a thousand people or just over, but yeah, because uh, <coughs> again, as like I said before, it's the great unknown. People sort of don't know. They don't know much what about to expect. it. Yeah, yeah. And, and we learned a lot because, well, we, firstly, we weren't learned how much it costs to put on a thing <laughs> yeah. like that out in Birdsville with all these artists and because you're still an insurance person at this point in insurance. time. You know, we did a basic budget how much it might cost, and yeah. You you, know, you could double that and more and we, we thought we might get 1500 people and we got a thousand so yeah you know, so you're we, out of we pocket. sort of went home you know with with quite a big loss did uh, you really personal loss. personal loss personal loss wow and you could have um, just stopped then yeah well we sort of we, we, we <laughs> were going to <laughs> i mean <laughs> how's, your, stop how's and, uh, your wife and all this i've got to oh, ask she's she a champion was, woman yeah, she she just said oh no whatever you greg i'll back you you know really? i trust you so she's been fantastic that's so beautiful what's her trust, name uh, raylene raylene yeah, so nice raylene crazy ideas that I've, I've had over the years but um like after i went home i actually got uh, made redundant from a corporate job crazy within a week after getting you home so i've lost all this serious. money i get back to the office <laughs> lost your say, sorry room. greg you haven't got a job anymore and it's like oh and uh oh but i got a nice payout got a golden handshake golden handshake uh -huh. i've been in the job for 20 years senior position so i got a got a decent quid um and tell me uh, what you did with that well yeah i, I went out and hired jimmy <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to we got to get this thing revved up, you know. You've got the best wife on the planet. <laughs> we, can't, we can't get this thing revved up, you know. It gets some really That's great hilarious. talent out. We're never going to get this thing show off the ground. So let's, uh, you know, That's let's, why let's, I asked let's go you. hard and, and, yeah. and put that money in, and you know, and, and see where see where it takes us. That's why I asked you. Did you think it was a calling or something bigger than just a? This would be a great idea because, like, that's you you you've lost money, lost your job. Mm got a 
got a bit of a, you know, yeah, pay out. a payout, which mm. is like, okay, everything, life's good again. Yeah. And you're like, I'm just going to do it again. Yeah. I think I can do it better next year. Yeah. Well, that, Where does yeah. that come from? Where does that kind of belief, self-belief well, come from? Yeah, I guess you, you, you learn things as you go along and go, well, you know, what am I going to do differently to make this work? You know, I yeah. need to invest more money. I need to do a lot of things differently and managing, manage it differently. Um, and sort of by that stage, I was, um, how old was I? I'd be like 53 years old by then and yeah. been in the corporate world since I was 18, so 35 years of, and, and you know, by that time you're sort of over. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I was over the corporate world, you know, all the, all the bureaucracy and all that stuff and it got harder and harder, you know, there's so many rules and regulations and mm. all the stuff, uh, you know, and I, so, so I didn't really want to go back and get another job in the corporate world. I, I yeah. just wanted to do something uh, where I was my own boss and do something meanif- meaningful and something where I could make a difference. And so I thought, well, you know, if I'm ever going to have a crack, let's uh, let's do it now. Let's just keep this thing going and see <laughs> see where it takes us. Yeah. So tell me where it took you. <laughs> well, uh, 2015, Jimmy Barnes, um, we got Jimmy to agree to come out, which was fantastic. I never thought we'd be able to That's what that. got me there. Yeah. I well, can't believe yeah. After like meeting you now and finding out, I didn't realise it was still in its infancy. Yeah, that's right. And we were there. It was amazing. So 2015, we got uh, Jimmy Barnes and a whole bunch of other mm. great artists coming out. Um, <clears throat> so stepped it up and uh, we ended up, I think, with uh, 3, 000, just over 3,000 people. So, you know, it was, the yeah. word was getting out. Uh, you know, we, we set our ticket prices, you know, higher than we had the year before because we knew how much it cost to put on and yeah. all of that sort of stuff. So I think... So you um, learned from that experience. Yeah, we learned from really that experience. So, um, yeah, and, and then, you know, our, our, I don't think we made a lot of money, but, you know, we did, we weren't losing money. You know, yeah. we covered our cost and probably made a little bit of money to reinvest in the following year. And and that sort of really, that was a bit of a turning point as to go, well, mm. yeah, this thing is sort of, this thing's starting to work. Yeah. You know, let's keep, let's keep pushing on. So I'm oh. pretty sure then in 2016, we went back out again. Yeah. Was that the year that rained out? That's the year that it rained out. So, <laughs> so MDC were a sponsor that year too, I think. Uh, that's correct, yeah. Oh, so, like a, a mine, I'm not sure what Yeah, mine sponsor. They were a caravan sponsor. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately that year, a uh, week or so before the crash, <laughs> we had a massive amount of rain and all the area out of Big Red uh, it was, you know, underwater. It was all flooded and yeah. we couldn't have the concert out there and we managed to convince the council yeah. to let us put it on the local oval opposite the pub. And that's the extraordinary. Bakery. So it was a massive job to reconfigure all of our logistics and just do the whole concert. Uh, I don't in, even in know town. how you did. I re- yeah. Yeah. And we had we had uh, 7,000 people. It went from 3,000 people in 2014. Yeah. We got like, Jimmy Barnes back because everyone wanted him to come back yeah. and you know, Paul Kelly and a whole bunch of others and and uh, and it just went off and, uh, you know, we had, we had 7,000 people and going And on. it was a screaming, <laughs> raging success. At what, so at this point in time, you're now a professional full-time music promoter. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I don't know if that's what you want to call it. I was just, <laughs> I a guy, just an ordinary guy out there having, having a go, but, yeah, yeah. promoting these events and That's and music, hilarious. So, yeah. You're a family business, though, too, aren't you? The, the family are hugely involved? That's right, yeah, my family. Family, uh, are really involved. Nice. Um, Steve and my young son, who who yeah. has the type one diabetes. Oh, that's so nice. He's, he works yeah. with us. He's an operations manager for the festivals and looks after a whole yeah. heap of the uh, the back end stuff for the festivals. And I've got my daughter Laura. She looks after uh, all of our office. She you know does all looks after the accounts, the merchandising, all of our communications, all our social media. Mm. And a bunch of other things, anything that needs to be done, really. So amazing. Uh, yeah, so and I'm going to say, you guys are a professional outfit. Like, it's not just like, oh, it's a half assed family business fluking getting you know 10 and 12,000 people out to the desert like it's a really it's it's a world recognized Mm. event yeah that's right it's you know I think we you know we've learned a lot and we've we've really we run the thing like a well-oiled machine now it's just oh you do come such a long way in all of the processes that in a short amount of time yeah in a relatively short amount of time it's a top-notch marketing yeah Yeah, we do a lot um, of great marketing marketing. PR, media all of that sort of stuff but you know just the management of it so many people uh, you know, say to us, this is the best organised event we've ever been to. Everything's managed, you know, really, really rigidly or, you know, really well. What you do really well, and I wanted to bring this up, with the volunteers. Let's talk about them. Yeah. yeah that well, is the most extraordinary thing I've ever seen. 
The second you sort of drive in out of the desert and come in, you know, it's all, and the way you've even got that all set up, like at the, the marshalling, because you have, how many cars would there be? Oh, we'd probably have 5,000 cars. 5,000 vehicles. In, so yeah, you sort of filter them in over two or three days. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yep. You know, this is outback roads. We're not talking about dual you know, <laughs> no. freeways. And so you've got all of that set up. And, and right from the second you drive in, there's volunteers there jumping around. Yeah. They're the happiest bunch of people I've ever seen. Yeah, well, that's great. I mean, we, we do put, you know, we've got nowadays, we've got close to 500 volunteers involved yeah. in the event. And, you know, we put a huge amount of effort in making, um, you know, we don't treat volunteers as just like cheap labour or free labour. It's not, you know, we no. want to make the volunteering experience for these people just a great experience. It's a different experience. than It's a social experience. A I've social met, experience. I've and, them, and they said they're yeah, here to make friends yeah, and have they're fun. Yeah, they here. You yeah. know, come together. They they do. They all do a great job. They're really proud of what they do. Mm. You know, they're the face of the event in in a lot of ways. Everybody loves them, and uh, you know they do get to enjoy the festival. We schedule their shifts so that they all have plenty of time off to go to mm. and see the music. So um, you know, see a lot of the music. So it's a great experience. We put them all in their own camping area. So there's a lot yeah. of camaraderie there. We have yeah. a big uh, celebration function for them. Thank you function after the event. So um, it's pretty special. So it's great. Yeah, we we love our volunteers and we put a lot of work into you know as i say making making, making it a special experience and making them feel valued if we don't have volunteers we don't have an event so it's really important yeah and, but it must that. come from you guys are you what's your role in the organization or chart <clears throat> i guess my role is the i know i'm the head on show yeah so you're driving it that's yeah, what I'm yeah, driving you're driving it, it. You yeah, drive it. Yeah, i'm driving it a day to day but there's a lot of uh really well skilled people uh as part of the team who look mm. after a lot of the logistics the production but it's your leadership uh, planning I guess, the top. risk management there's all sorts of stuff yeah. yeah that's right i guess it's you know i'm i'm ultimately in charge the, the buck stops with me and uh, yeah. yeah but i'm i work on the event gear around day to day and uh, get involved in all the details. What's great is you're so hands on. Like I've been to three red bashes and one Monday Monday. Yeah. And um, which we'll talk about in a sec. I'll see you at all of them. Yeah. You're yep. there. You're hands on. You're dressed up. <laughs> when, when we do, and we'll talk about that in a sec too. The drag races. You're in yep. drag. The Mad Max out at Birds <laughs> at, at, at Broken Hill. You're in. You're dressed up as Mad Max. Like you totally <laughs> embrace it. Yeah. Um. I think that's got a lot to do with the success of the event as well too, because it starts from the top. That's why I wanted yeah. to find out. Are you the CEO and does it all start from you? Like yeah. it just, it filters down through it, I guess. Yeah. And, and your love a, and passion. Yeah. And it's a family company. So I think that vibe of it's, you know, we're not a big major corporation. We're not like a live nation or a frontier touring or, yeah. you know, a big, big. Probably should be. Yeah. Big thing like that. We're a small family business. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and the passion comes through from the top, and uh, yeah. you know, and, and we really just want to make sure that everybody's working with us, with our it. staff, our volunteers feel valued, and 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 want to work as part of in that sort of environment. So, how did you come up? Because it's so clever. There's so many fundraising opportunities. There's, how did you come up with the different ones? At Birdsville, there's the Nutbush, which we do that at both events. Yep. And then you also have the drag races through yep. the desert. How? Who thought of that? That is oh, genius. I, yeah, I sort, of, I sort of thought of them. You the, thought of them. The, the, the drag race thing. Yeah. Everyone thought that was a crazy idea. Nobody's going to get dressed up and do this. But they did, and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger, and people have a fantastic And it's not just time. people. It's I'm, really colourful. and it's, I'm talking about yeah. big, burly camping dudes that are four-wheel yeah. drivers. And yeah. The yeah. guy that wins, the, is he a truckie or something? He's a truckie, yeah, but he, gets, he puts a lot of effort into his costume. His wife makes his costume, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, that's right. Extraordinary. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing, yeah. yeah, he's yeah. become iconic. I think too. When you go to the big bash, you want to see him and what costume has he got yeah, this year? Yeah, and then the nutbush thing, which has been a you know a major uh, success yeah. really for us. But the way that came about, we were working with the Royal Flying Doctor Service. Yeah, who, great so people. We raised a lot of funds for. Yeah, and they thought, well, let's you know we've got so many people here, let's try and do some sort of world recordy yeah. sort of attempt at something. So we we con got in contact with. Uh, uh, Guinness World Record people, mm -hmm. and we uh, we looked at all these different opportunities for different types of record of record events, and yeah. saw this nutbush dance on the list, and thought this, <laughs> this has got to be it because it's just it's really an Australian thing in a way the nutbush dance, the way it's danced, and uh, Is that everybody true? knows it. Does yeah. nobody do that around? That's not in America or anywhere. Well, like not that? really. No, so it's really anything with that. 
Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's an Australian sort of How thing. How funny. But, uh, I think it came from, you know, when the uh, dance first came out 50 years, it's 50 years ago now, so like back in the 70s. Oh, yeah, yeah. 73 came out and then it was sort of, uh, I think it was taught in schools as part of a PE Curriculum. Sort of Curriculum. <laughs> <laughs> so, and the dance came about from that. So, That's so funny. Uh, yeah, it's amazing. So people love it. It's good fun. Uh, pe- most people know the steps to the nut bush. It's pretty easy. It's a great song to... Well, we embrace it as the NBC owners group. We were actually in the front row. Oh, Do you yeah, remember the hippos right. and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, people right. dressed up? People there. That was us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're yeah, in the front row. Great. And so for about six weeks we held the record yeah, yeah, until Monday, right. Monday, until Monday, Monday, Monday. But it did meet it by much. I think we had yeah, nearly five, nearly 6,000 people at uh, – Birdsville, 5,800 at Birdsville. Yeah. Year, it's fantastic. In just doing that dance. Just doing that dance, yeah. Crazy, yeah. crazy. <laughs> and how did you come up with the drag de- the drags? You well, just thought it of it? Just a, yeah, just a thought. Just uh, Actually, the first year we did it was in 2016, which was well, the wet year. Mm. And uh, so we ended up doing it in Birdsville, and we had all these drag queens doing a lap around Birdsville, around the streets. <laughs> actually, which is so house, magnificent. Yeah, I remember past the, the footage. Pub and, yeah, all of that sort of stuff be, become popular. So how do we keep it? I guess when something starts, and grows how do you keep it fresh and fresh and current and alive like how do you keep that energy going yeah well that's that's a good question because obviously mm. you've got to keep uh you know you're doing new growing. things and growing but and you can't uh, grow in size because you, you're contained to a certain amount of people you can get yeah into that that's right and I, I think that's uh you know we're, we're now to the size where that it's about as big as it can be now yeah um, you know and we don't want to grow for the sake of growing well you need it as it a would be too big yeah be too big and you know the experience wouldn't be as as good for people being too big so oh, i'm trying to keep it you know fresh and relevant and new yeah. ideas and new artists and yeah just new stuff but you know at the same time keep improving the delivery of the event making sure it's all well yeah. Nice. People have a great time. People are kept safe, and uh, they can they can just uh, come out. And, and well, it's really out. it's really become something iconic. I think of people that travel around Australia. It's kind of like they actually structure their trip around now, getting to the big red bash at the same time. That's right. Yeah, yeah it, it which is. must it's, be just such a, an incredible feeling for you. Yeah, no, it is. It can be the centerpiece of someone's longer trip, or and, and generally, even if it's not, you know, people uh, who come into the big red bash, they'll they'll do a, like a two or three week trip. They'll go, I'm going to the big red bash. I'll Mm. Let's do let's do a week getting out there, a week and a half, ten days getting back. So I don't know. You can tell me if there's been other groups, but you allow us to have a paddock out there. We call it the NDC paddock. So thank you very much. (laughs) And you know, it's really nice if you work with us. You know, it's a real community thing. So we feel really respected and. And that's how you keep getting our loyalty, and we keep talking a bit yeah. about the big red bash because you section off a paddock for us. You know, eighty yeah. odd vans come in, so that's you know, it's good yeah, business that's right. We still had a good relationship with you know the owners group the owners and all group, the owners, yeah. and there were so many of them. Um, you know, and they asked us, "Well, well, you know, you know, there's no sponsorship, so we don't really have our sponsor area anymore." Can you? Yeah. Help what can us you do? Out? And yeah. uh, you know, because it was such a large group, it's not something we would normally do for a group of ten or twelve or even yeah. 20, yeah. twenty vans, uh, but because you know we had that relationship and it was such a large group we, mm. we um you know we kept that area going i uh, know daniel easton who is our godfather of the group he, he will kill me if i don't ask you this and you can choose you can just choose a smile or, or just say yeah. no comment he has a big campaign to get I a certain know. artist <laughs> out to the bash yeah. and i and you must get a lot of requests we do get for lots artists of out requests. the bash yeah. now yeah. daniel has a particular fetish for delta goodrum really <laughs> she, yeah, i know i know i know if anyone watches any footage there he had a large blow up side of her last year that he took around for the entire event yes um yeah. how did he so you can smile and just say, yeah. have you ever approached Delta? Oh, we've canvassed to... all yeah. Australian artists. So, yeah. yeah How do you, uh, is there a panel that comes together to decide what oh, artists you're going to use? There's a, there's a few, a small, small number of us. We sort of toss around ideas and that sort of stuff. But, um, you know, it, it's uh, it's never easy getting all the artists you want because they've got their own schedules and doing their they own do. things at a time. I mean, we're on that, a specific time. and if, Yeah. Um, Say Delta has something else on, a home tour or, you know, <laughs> this or that or whatever. It, it, all the stars don't align all the time. And, you know, we try and get, you know, as much variety as we can. Yeah. And some of the best artists we can get. You know, for example, this year we've managed to get uh, Tina Arena who, who for Birdfall. Which and she's we, never performed she's there, never I think. never performed before. So, Amazing. That's going to be uh, incredible. You know, so it'll be great. And, uh, you know, we've got Colin Hay who's he's performing his first time. He's coming out mm. from the US. He's based in the US. So, mm. um, you know, he's 
he's Minute Work, isn't he? He's the Minute Work yeah. guy. Yeah. So, you know, we'll get some of those Minute Work classics, Land Down yeah. Under and, yeah. you know, Who Can It Be Now and all those other ones. So it'll be fantastic to have uh, him out there. So we always try to bring in, uh, you know, uh, new artists, new blood. new blood that we haven't had before. And, you know, mm. we, we also try and listen to what, people are telling us you know i'm who, sure they are telling who you they us. want to see and, yeah. <laughs> and uh, daniel tells us uh, frequently very clearly <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good so quickly tell us about a monday monday how did that happen because you know you're doing birds all and everything's going great mm. how did the the monday monday thing out at um broken hill get well, put together yeah well i guess with uh, birds for growing as it has and reaching sort of its capacity and becoming so successful mm. and us building you know of work you know for, me, for over the years to build a really successful event model and process and mm. that sort of stuff we we sort of thought that it's um you know it would be a good time and a good opportunity to do something similar in um you know another yeah. classic outback location it's such a good location yeah it's a great location people can get there really easily it is easier uh, to get there it's it pretty much all tar there. it's all tar mm -hmm. you know anyone can come you can bring your tesla or your bring your tesla. Corolla or whatever you want to bring <laughs> do uh, we really get teslas out got, yeah we got teslas last oh my year God, that's and, hilarious. And, and so all the people with who might have uh, on-road caravans who are not really true a uh, bit, bit nervous about bringing their pants of birds for well, they can go to monday monday and they'll get a similar experience mm. obviously they won't have the big red june and the bird full hotel and being in the far out back but they're getting a great experience and a fantastic well they still get to go out to silver the plane, the Mad Max Museum. Museum. all of that stuff so yeah Trips but then COVID hit in 2020 mm. and big red bash was cancelled for that year as that was every tough. other year music yeah. event in australia how did that go for you as an organization was oh, that a stressful it was very time? tough yeah look it, yeah. it did cost us a huge amount of money that's a, it did it's a risky sort of business when you have a cancellation like that you can't insure for that uh, <laughs> you would know unfortunately yeah i yeah, know that's uh, your speciality did you yeah. get any um any support from the government oh we got a little bit of support mm. but you know obviously it's because you're putting you know, on a tourist event like you are a tourist event. Yeah, partner, you're, yeah. you're partnering with the government really and right. the queensland government yeah. and the new south Wales yeah. government no we, we got some we got some reasonable support but you know no it doesn't not, cover it doesn't you. cover the uh, what you what you're out of pocket and what you've lost it was only one year that was cancelled it was only one year that was yeah. cancelled we came back in 2021 and that was so close to the line because, i you know, remember i remember uh, watching all of the facebook posts yeah, about yeah, people trying to cross borders yeah we had borders closing yeah. But when COVID hit, we thought, well, we've got really nothing to do this year. Let's really now <laughs> use that time to, to focus build. on uh, getting everything up and ready and building mm. everything so that we can launch uh, Monday, Monday. Once COVID, uh, you know, once we get through COVID, then we'll yeah. have this new festival that we can launch. And let's, uh, uh, we've run three events now out at Monday, Monday. We ran mm. well, the first one in 2021. That was going to be August, just after Big Red Bash, but it was uh, postponed because yeah. the Delta wave had hit yeah uh, delta delta there Sorry. you go <laughs> that was for you daniel you know, everyone everyone was in lockdown again all the yeah. borders were closed it was all of that stuff so we postponed that event till april 22 mm. uh, but we still wanted to have our normal august event so we had actually had two monday monday bashes in 2022 yeah, awesome. and i think that's what i love about your events too i just want to say that give you guys a plug is that really good people attend it's not mm. a music festival full of oh no you know no. groovy trendy kids yeah. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. people i'm in my early 50s mm. and i felt young yeah. you know <laughs> but there's but then next to me could be a kid as well yeah yeah, yeah. and then, very, then there's a grandparent you know yeah, it's just such it's a beautiful family, family. Family. yeah it's not a, it's not what you would call a youth festival which might be no. something like a and it's still the grass safe. or whatever and it is it's safe I safe mean, it's civilized but you can get into the mosh if you yeah, want to yeah, and have yeah. fun yeah well people don't you know so we've got a mature fairly mature demographic people yeah. from their generally 40s 50s 60s and whatever of music uh, lovers music lovers but, but families lots yeah. of families we've got you know we perhaps probably have close to 2,000 kids yeah over 18, so and dogs it's really safe dogs, dogs yeah. you know, bring your own grog bring your own dog <laughs> kids so, and like it's being in birds for people don't come that whole distance to to muck around and misbehave and cause trouble it's no. such a, a you know such a respectful crowd who all do the right thing they really There's do never any never any drama so people can feel safe and, even when you everyone's milling back you know because it all finishes probably about nine o'clock nine thirty it wraps up because it's yeah, cold yeah it's cold we, so, we actually try and finish by sort of eight thirty at night you know generally yeah and yeah. it's been going all afternoon and night so you're happy for it to end then yeah. and everything's signposted and it's uh, what do you do when people lose their vans 
Uh, How do you help those people? Because I've, I was taking yeah. photos of landmarks and flags yeah, on yeah. things, and I, mean, there's I never of, lost mine. <laughs> well, I mean, we put really good signage up on every intersection. Uh, we give them an app where they can sort of mark where their van is. Yeah. And the internet on your app, you can just see where your yeah. van is. Um, you know, we advise people to sort of have a plan Be to get mindful. back to the van at, at the night, yeah. you know, like have a landmark or yeah. you know what street it's on, you know, because you've got like a walking path and a street. So, no. yeah. yeah, look, I mean, when people are a bit careless and just don't really pay much attention to where their van is. It can be, you know, to find it. I like suppose it's when center. you go shopping centre, yeah. you know, 40 night parking, which shop, you know. Yeah, pretty funny. But, uh, yeah, but people, they, they all eventually get there. What's your favourite? You must have a couple of real top three moments, emotional moments of running the bash. What would they be for uh, you? I think, well, this year we did um, a new event called Big Blue Day. So we brought all uh, to get back to raising money for type 1 diabetes we got everybody dressed in blue we formed yeah. the big shape of australia it was beautiful set a new new world record for yeah. the most number of people you know forming a shape of a country we had john williamson there uh, sitting out yeah. in the middle singing true blue yeah that was really special you know i think just getting through 2021 the amount of challenges that we had uh to to pull that event off we were the first big music festival in Australia and just about the world to come back after COVID. Mm. Um, so for us to be able to do that and pull that off That's monumental. Uh, was amazing. While, you know, Sydney was in lockdown, borders were closed, the challenges that we faced yeah. every day in the lead up to the festival, the COVID rules were changing. So we spent half of our time mm. trying to <clears throat> figure out how we comply with today's COVID rules and mm. change again. And uh, so it was a massive challenge for the team. And, uh, you know, at times we thought we're just not going to get this across the line, but we eventually did. So that was an amazing, you know, amazing sense. It of, really was. Yeah. Any Anything else? That's two. That's two. <laughs> <laughs> anything. It can be small. It can be big. It can oh, be your favourite uh, artist. It can be. I think uh, some of the artists we've had out there, being able to get Midnight Oil out there in 2019 on the, on the June to see them. <sighs> Um, you know, perform on the gym. We've been, we tried for many, many years uh, to get them and finally were able to. Can I say that was mine? Monday, Monday 2022. Two, yes. Yeah. Midnight Oil. Yeah. That was my moment. Yeah, was that was they put extraordinary. Yeah, but yeah. Of all the bands, Australian band, everyone's awesome, but yeah. Australian iconic Australian band in a desert. Yeah. Like yeah, singing yeah. songs about the desert and yeah. the land and about yeah. Aboriginal culture and yeah. just. Yeah. And, Another one for me too is Casey Chambers. Oh, she's amazing. Wow, yeah. can that woman, she's, she uh, just goes with the land. She does, yeah. yeah. She's, she's beautiful and, uh, you know, she really engages with the crowd. And and you, can, you can feel her joy of yeah. being there. All the yeah. artists always say that actually at the gig. Yeah. They all, they're just going, I can't believe I'm here. And they take selfies of themselves with the crowd. And like, <laughs> That's right, you can see it. their it's, joy. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. such a beautiful, if you're ever going to be a music, if you're into music and you're intimidated about the drive out there, go to the Monday, Monday one. Yep. Then after you've done that one, I would highly suggest do your research. There's the, you've got a great Facebook page for the Big Red mm. actually. Go do the research, ask the questions. There's so many helpful people. Your website is a huge resource. Mm, yeah, There's so right. much information on there yeah. on how to do it. Driving convoy, if you don't feel sort of safe doing those big distances on those sort of roads by yourself, but it's very doable. You can get out there and two wheel drive. Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah it's doable. You just got to. Drive to the conditions and plan, yeah, and uh, yeah. there's plenty of people out there to that'll give you a, a hand if you need a, need a hand with anything. Yeah. You know, if you get into trouble, people are really obliging. And but it's just it's just not your average concert. Like every morning you get up, we climb up the top of Big Red, watch the bagpiper, watch yeah. the sun rise over yeah. over the the setting. It's incredible. I did yoga every morning yeah. like up on the up on Big Red. Up it's Big just Red. yeah, it's nice, isn't it? The, the kids are just like coming down on surfboards and stuff. It's just the most beautiful environment and yeah. atmosphere and you meet so many people, so many friendly people go to these things. It's yeah, just that's a, right. The crowd, are, <clears throat> yeah, you do meet amazing people. They're really good people. It's more than just and, a music uh, festival. Yeah, that's right. It's a so gathering. Much more. Yeah, it's a great, unique Australian gathering, isn't it? Yeah. Did mm. you ever, in a million years, <laughs> look at your life right this minute, like say, 15 years ago and have a clue this was in store for you not at all that's like who would have thought because you're a pretty ordinary guy yeah, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> but you're not yeah, yeah, but, but you're not but it's just crazy you look at it you go, yeah. well, you know how did this all happen and it's it's, it's a bit of a i'm going to circle back around to that because yeah, i'm interested in that thing, yeah. no it's not yeah. what is it that's different about you than other people that you think that pulled this off because this isn't 
You have. You've had challenges. I think I enjoy a challenge, particularly once they, yeah. you know, if you can get through them. But, um, you know, I just enjoy that that challenge. I enjoy creating something and being able to actually see that um, what you've created is bringing so much joy oh. to so many people. And you can just, that, that's just a real, gives you a real sense of, um, <clears throat> you know, satisfaction that you've been able to do that. If it wasn't for, for, for you know, putting ourselves on the line and doing what we do, you know, mm. that wouldn't happen. And it's not just the people at the event. It's, you know, all these little outback towns and communities. They oh, all love it. They thrive, you know. Totally. They, they know it's bash time and they know yeah. that people are coming through. They're going to be spending their money it's and economic, staying so in then. town and economics. So and it brings it gives, more people back to travel back again, you know, yeah. when the bash isn't on. They're like, I want to come back here when it's not so busy. That's right. Yeah, that's right. It really mm. showcases that fantastic uh, outback area of Australia and Queensland mm. outback. And yeah. I don't know, I guess, uh, you know, we've been lucky in a way that some of these th risks and gambles have, have paid off. I mean, a lot of people go into business and put it all on the line and, and for whatever reason it, it doesn't work and it fails and this could have quite easily ended well, up Well, it kind of did, but you didn't accept failure. Failure, yeah. it wasn't failure. No. No, that's it was just a learning experience. Yeah, expensive learning <laughs> a experience. A very big learning experience. Yeah, big, but the universe yeah. looked after you by gifting you more money, your yeah. money. Well, yeah, 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 that's <laughs> All right. your money. Yeah, yeah. But, so tell me, we'll sign off on this. What's for the future? Are there any, any little surprises <laughs> coming up or any... Any future festivals you've got in the back of your mind? <laughs> no, look, I think it's uh, these two festivals are, are pretty much it. They yeah. keep us going full time. They and, do. Uh, you know, you don't want to make the straw that breaks the camel's back, so to speak. Yeah, uh, we just want to nice. make the continue to make these festivals. You know, keep them relevant, keep them keep them great, and uh, just just keep them going. Oh, look, it's just such a privilege to interview. <laughs> I know I'm going to think of a hundred things to ask you in a minute, but if I do, I'll just interview you when I'm out at the uh, bash this year because we'll be fine. heading out in the MDC paddock. Yep. We'll be out there. If you have an MDC or if you're friends of MDC, make sure you get in touch with the MDC Oz RV Owners Group. Find out how you can be part of the paddock that goes out there, and these beautiful people will actually set us up. I'm telling you, it's right near the front as close as you can get right behind the vendors we are looked after we have a beautiful partnership and friendship with your organization mm. and find out how you can be part of it and we'd love to see you out there yeah we're looking forward to seeing the mdc group I know. There again, uh, we're, a color, we're a colorful group year, we're noisy along with everybody else so yeah uh, with the other ten thousand of our friends yeah <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much greg look it's been a truly a delight to interview you thank you very much no worries thanks it's been uh, great to chat thank you yeah we really hope you enjoy listening in. Be sure to follow MDC on all of our socials. And if you want to like and share and visit the MDC website to find more of our upcoming episodes, we'd really love that. See you off grid and happy caravanning.